look at so far. Air, water, nutrients. Isn't that simple? The first thing I do with people, water. Hydrate them. A lot of water. A lot of water starts to cleanse the body out, bring healing, give them the right water balance so they can start fighting something. Do you know that medications do not heal your body? Medications go in and force the body to arrest certain symptoms. And by the, the, the forcefulness of how it arrests it, it creates a secondary disease. It destroys your kidneys, your pancreas, your liver. And then you need another medication to take care of what that first medication does because it arrests that first medication. Then it'll destroy your heart and then your spleen. Then you need a third medication and on and on and on until eventually you die. But when we talk about God's plan, God's plan is that you would understand that what God has placed in the body right now is for healing. People go in to get vaccines or flu shots, and all the flu shot does is it goes into your body and forces your body to stimulate your immune system. Now, without an immune system, what can be done? If you could naturally stimulate your own immune system and naturally boost your immune system, would you need the vaccine? No. The reason why people are getting these vaccines is because their immune system is so low because they're eating all these foods that we see in our sheet here. They're living in the type of way that's causing this condition of the body, which is lowering their immunity, dehydrating them. They're not getting fresh air, or they're smoking and they're taking different fluorocarbons into their body, which is causing lower immunity and creating a perfect environment, super acidity, where viruses can live. God said, air, water, nutrients. This is where you start. And guess what, brothers and sisters? It says when God breathed into man the breath of life, he became what type of being? A living soul. It didn't say he put a soul in him. I don't know where people read that in the Bible. It's not in there. It doesn't say he put a soul in him. He breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living person, a living soul. So when we look at that, if man became a living soul, this dirt man, if you will, this clay man, this man of the dust, was made from, and here's a word you may want to write down, inorganic elements. Potassium, zinc, magnesium, calcium, iron, all these various elements that man was made from, that it was formed from that clay, those are inorganic. That means that they don't have any life in them, or carbon. They're dead elements. This metal right here on this little lamp, lamp stand, metal. Iron, probably. Same iron there, same iron in the ground. Calcium, same thing. The chalk, calcium, the various, dead, not living. The body is made <clears throat> here in Genesis 2-7 from dead elements. God breathed into his nostrils and man became living tissue. Living tissue. Now it's still elements, it's still made up of these elements, but these elements are not dead elements now. They're living tissue. It became this, this living stuff that we have here, this flesh that the Bible talks about. The life of the blood, life of the flesh is in the blood. This flesh is called by God breathing into man. Man could no longer say, because I'm formed from the dust, I'm going to go and take a handful of clay and put it upon my hand, or even put it upon my stomach and get nutrients from that. Or take a handful of clay or a handful of dirt and eat it and say he's going to get nutrients from that. Your body cannot assimilate correctly inorganic dirt elements. God designed a way that these inorganic elements that man was made from can be converted. You're going to find all throughout the principles of the Bible, the spiritual principles and the natural principles are harmonizing. Just as we found out that we are going to maintain what God has done, just like we do in the Christian walk. We receive Christ and maintain a relationship with him. We receive health and maintain the air, the water, the nutrient balance. The same way, these inorganic elements or these dead elements must be converted before they can help you. When a man has been converted or God has breathed into him, he can't go back to the world and get any pleasure there. If he does, he will die. If man, which was made from the dead elements, receives life in Christ or was, had God breathed into him, he cannot go back to the dirt and eat that. God made the tree to facilitate the nutrients man needs. In Genesis 1.29, we found out that God said he gave man the fruit 
of the tree, the seeds, the grain, and so on, to be his food, to be his meat. Why? Because the root system here we see on the tree takes the inorganic elements and converts them. You ever heard of the word conversion? It said the man be converted. We need to be converted to be Christians. We can't just say we're going to choose Jesus like we choose Buddha. God must do a supernatural work in the heart and change us from dead in trespasses and sin to alive in Christ. The same way our food must be converted. Unless this iron, which is inorganic, is converted to organic iron, our body can't use it. We talked the other day about women taking these prenatal pills of iron, and it causes nausea and constipation and various different problems because it is inorganic. People are spending multiplied millions of dollars getting vitamins that are inorganic, and it goes right into the toilet bowl. Most people, they take these vitamins, their urine becomes very, very dark, and they don't know why, but their body is excreting all these inorganic elements they can't use. Your body needs living elements that must go through a root system. We find that when we look at the Word of God, that the things that go through a tree, it must, to conversion all only can take place for man to be benefited in harmony with the tree. In harmony with the tree. Now, why is that so, so spiritually important for us? Look at the book of Acts 10. Acts 10. As Christians, we understand these principles are created by the Savior of mankind, Jesus Christ. And why is it so important that our food, God in the beginning ordained that the food that would benefit man was not the dirt that he was made from, because man was breathed upon, he became living tissue, living elements, and he could not go to the dirt and get this non-converted or this dead rudiments of the earth and eat it. He must have converted food, food that is touched by a root system, touched by the tree. Why is the tree so important for us to eat and live? Even in Genesis 129, in Acts 10, Acts the 10th chapter, and verse 39, let's look at what it says there. Acts 10, Acts chapter 10, and let's begin in verse 30, Acts 10 and verse 37. Acts 10 and verse 37, are we there? Acts 10, 37 says this. Are we there? Say amen if you're there. Acts 10, 37 says, That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and did what? Hanged on what? I thought he was hanged upon a cross. What does the Bible say there? God says he was hanged upon a tree. God hanged upon a tree. Our salvation, our conversion, our new life in Christ can come only by what Christ did upon the tree. Our food our best, our perfect food comes through the tree. Christ is the fruit of Calvary. By partaking of him, we have everlasting life. By partaking of him, we are converted. We are maintained in spiritual life. Just so the apples, the oranges, the peaches, the plums, the pears are food that are converted from dead elements to living elements. In the apple, you have organic or converted or living iron and calcium and all these various different things. This is the medium in which God desires us to have. This is the medium in which God desires for us to eat it. These are the elements that can benefit us. If you try and take vitamins, which all these dead elements, vitamins and so on, they're not made from natural foods or not getting it from your natural foods, your body cannot utilize it. You spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on vitamins that will not help you. Only thing that can help us is what God, you're going to find over and over again that you're going to go to the health food store and find that there's very little to do with health in most health food stores. You can go and get vegetarian cigarettes in the health food store if you want. I've seen, I've seen people buy them. Vegetarian cigarettes. Now what kind of sense does that make? But if you will buy it, they'll sell it to you. But again, brothers and sisters, you cannot get around the fact that you cannot, can you, as a finite man, I don't care how many letters you have behind your name, can you, by searching, find out God? Can you do better and do greater than the, the God of the universe has done? Can you do a greater work? Can you take something that you have made and say, this is better than what God has made? How can you say that what God has done in the beginning and how God orchestrated and created 
a diet and a principle of living for man is not good and we have something better now. It is impossible. You must go back to what God has done. They found that they're looking at these different chemicals in these various foods like garlic and onion and so on, even lemon, and find that they can find no stronger medicinal properties in any medical uh, uh, pre preparation known to man than what's found inside these foods. If they could find some way to copyright them, they would take it out of the earth and lock it up so you couldn't get it and sell it, but they can't. So they leave this area alone and they go into making chemicals. And what are those chemicals made from? Sometimes they're made from herbs, but they mix it with a chemical, which is usually inorganic elements. Things that are chemicals that are going to try and harm the body rather than help the body. We want God's plan tonight, amen? As we continue to look a little bit further, God said that man was made from the dust, he became living tissue. The fruit of Calvary here, we see the cross right here in the tree. Acts 10.39 says that God, Jesus Christ, died upon Calvary. He was hanged upon a tree. He is the fruit of Calvary. We must partake of him to have an eternal life. And when we look at the tree and what the tree does that God created, the tree does the same thing in the natural world that the cross does for us in the spiritual world. It gives us life, does it not? Does it also, when we look at the tree, the tree has fruit here in the sunlight in the world where we can see it, but the mo majority of the work that the, that, the, that the tree does is hidden from the eye. Can you see angels? Can you see the work of the Holy Spirit with your own eye? You can't see it. Just like down here, the root system is where all the action is happening. All the converting power of God is, is, is hidden from man's eyes under an area where we can't, it's in darkness. The workings of the tree are all down here where all these chemical changes and all this drawing power is going on, it's hidden from our eyes. But we see the fruit of it, the same thing with the spiritual. Do you know that the tree takes in poison and gives off life? Like when Jesus went to the cross, he took our sins, and by taking our sins, he gave us Life. The tree takes in carbon dioxide and gives off oxygen. If there were no trees upon the world, people would quickly die. The trees are the lungs of the world. The tree has many spiritual lessons for us. That's why Deuteronomy 10 says that the tree of the field is man's life. When we understand this principle, we will see why it's important that we eat differently, where we get the nutrition that God has for us. As a matter of fact, look what it says in the book of Revelation. We plan on going to heaven, don't we? How many plan to go to heaven tonight? How many plan to go to heaven? Don't you want, want to make plans to go there? Look at Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22 knows what the Bible says here. Revelation 22, we find that when we look at the word of God, the book of Revelation says that when we go to heaven, our diet is going to be fruits from the tree. Now, how many still want to go there? Now, some people say, well, I don't want to change my diet here. I'll wait till I get there. Well, brothers and sisters, if you don't want to do what God says here, how likely are you going to do what God says there? If you, don't, if you don't want to use the healing medicines that God has here, would you want it there? Do you know that when we get to heaven, the Bible says that there's going to be healing medicine that we're going to take in heaven that comes from the tree? Notice Revelation 22. It's right here in your Bible. It's been there all along. I'm not sure why people have not read these precious truths. Revelation 22, beginning with verse 1. Revelation 22 and verse 1, the Bible says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was what? There's some water right there, with water, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for what? The healing of the nation. Brothers and sisters, do you know that in heaven there's going to be a process of healing going on there? And it says the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Do you know that the leaves of the tree here on the earth have healing properties in them too? And if we can understand how to use these leaves, we can have life. Not just the leaves of the tree, but we know also that when man sinned, that God gave something else for man too. Because remember, this diet of fruit and the grains and various things that come from a tree or from a root system, those things give life to man. But there's something more. Because sin has caused man's tissues, those living tissues that we have, to degenerate quickly. And it causes certain effects in the body that need to be helped or remedied by something else that God put in the world that originally wasn't a part of his diet when there was no sin, 
But because of sin, God now added something to help us. Genesis 3.18 says this. Look at Genesis 3. In the book of Genesis 3, notice what it says here. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 18. We're talking about what is man, and we're seeing how all the things that God has created are for man. Both in the spiritual realm and in the natural, God is showing us the principles of health and why this diet that God gave is the best. And even when we talk about it, we just turn to Genesis 3, even if we talk about the time that we're living in right now, Matthew 24 says this is a time of pestilence. All around the world, everyone's talking about avian flu and mad cow and all these various diseases that are in the animal creation. And even E. coli, people are trying to now blame E. coli on spinach. Brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. E. coli can't be caused by spinach. E. coli comes from animals. The only way you can get E. coli is not by eating spinach. You have to eat spinach that has some kind of animal waste on there. E. coli grows in the gut, in the intestine. When they did their studies and found out that what happened with the, with the spinach was, there were some pigs around. There's a pig farm. And the pig ran through the farm, or ran through the spinach probably, and defecated. It left some of its waste there. And there was E. coli inside there, and it got spread around, and that was, that's what called the big E. coli problem. E. coli comes from the intestine of humans and animals. It doesn't come from spinach. People are trying to say, well, we need to be careful of spinach now. You can't be trusting anything now, brothers and sisters. If you eat an animal that has E. coli and then eat his flesh that has cancer and leukemia and so on, and say, oh, this is, this is good, I should eat this. And then you say spinach, which only can get E. coli by being in contact with the animal, is bad. Brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. In Matthew 24, Jesus said in the last days, the main thing that's going to happen is deception. The media knows, the rich people of this world that know that they're all the empires based upon you eating all the meat, all the dairy, all the cheese you can, are going to try and put so many different studies out there, so many different reports, and so many different conflicting things, because they know if you become confused, guess what you're going to do? What you've been doing all along. You're not going to make any change if you're confused. That's why we've come every night and not just tickled you with just some different demonstration. We've been educating you line upon line and precept upon precept because you have to make a decision one day. Not only for your own personal health, but soon, the Bible says, the mark of the beast is going to be enforced and pressed upon all the peoples of the land. And you have to make a personal decision based upon your personal relationship with Christ. I can't help you. The evangelists can't help you. We are trying to give you the tools with which you can stand upon Christ for yourself to make decisions. Eating right, having a healthy body is one of the most important components of making right decisions. If you want to get the seal of God in your forehead rather than the mark of the beast, what kind of decisions are you making right now? You have to have the power, the mental power through the Holy Spirit and through maintaining the temple of God that you can stand these last days. Especially when Isaiah and Matthew and all these various prophets say that today is a day of disease. And if we don't have the refuge in Christ, both in him as a savior and also by following the principles of his word, we will be among those that will fall as 10,000 to the right and 1,000 to the left. We won't be those that will see only with our eyes the wicked falling we will be those that are going to fall because we have not made the Lord our fortress. Brothers and sisters, I want to make the Lord my fortress tonight. How about you? I want to make the Lord my counsel. I want to walk in his ways. In the book of Genesis, notice what it says here in Genesis chapter 3. God added something that man could have a medicine even before he went to the leaves of the tree. <clears throat> in Genesis 3, God wants to give man a medicine. Now understand, before God gave man this medicine, Adam tried to heal himself. Remember we saw in Revelation that the tree had leaves that had healing properties, and the people in heaven are going to eat from the leaves of the tree, and it's going to heal the nations? Now Adam had an opportunity to understand and see these things. So before God gave the gospel and gave his plan, Adam ran and put one upon himself. Fig leaves. He tried to put it on himself and try, he tried to heal himself by his own methods. And today, there are a lot of man made methods of healing. There are a lot of new age techniques that come from the Far East of healing, which are as fruitless and as devilish and as non spiritual as Adam's fig leaf coat. We want to understand God's plan. Amen.
Genesis 3 and verse 18 says this. It says, thorns also and thistles shall it, meaning the ground, bring forth to thee. And here's a command. And thou shalt do what? Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Now, what are these herbs, brothers and sisters? What are these herbs that we're talking about here? Who knows? Say it out loud if you know. Vegetables, what else? What are herbs? It's the flowers, it's grasses, it's all the, the word herb means plants. The plants of the field. You have the tree, and the root system of the tree, if you know anything about a tree, the root system of the tree goes out. It goes out very, very far, and it builds and pulls in nutrients all around the tree, very, very far. Here we have a little plant here, herb of the field. Nice, great. Let's say there's a beetroot here. These roots don't go out far, they go down. By the fact that they go down, sometimes down very, very far, sometimes feet down, they tend to pull more of the elements than even some of the trees do. You're going to find that fruit is higher in vitamins, many of the fruits, higher in vitamins and different phytochemicals than minerals. Your vegetables, your herbs are very high because this root system going down in minerals, in organic, potassium, magnesium, so on. And that's why they are, they are very, very healing to the body. That's why we use them as medicines. Also, we'll look at the book of Psalms. Let's give you some scripture for this. Psalms, Psalms 104. Psalms 104. I don't want you to think that I'm just giving you some medical advice. We're not giving you medical advice. We're giving you biblical advice. Psalms 104. Let's see if we find some scripture to tell us what these herbs are for and what they're supposed to do. The principles, again, God says, are from his voice, from his mouth. They're in the word of God. I didn't come up with this by my own reasoning. They're in God's word. And more than being in God's word, I have used them in over 15 years of ministry, and I've seen people healed, not just by virtue of praying and leaving them to, to their own devices, but praying and following these principles, I've seen some of the most terrible diseases reversed. I've seen people that were said to be dead in weeks or days that are here today to testify of God's power because of the principles and God's promise. Exodus 15, 26 is being fulfilled today by not only myself and various people that understand these principles, but hundreds, even you, some people in this room, are going to take this message, take these principles, and I'm going to go places where I could never go. Talk to people I can never talk to and do a greater work than I could ever do. Some of these simple things that I'm doing, they're going to do it on a much larger scale because God is continuing to fulfill the promise of Exodus 15, 26. But in Psalms 104, let's see about these herbs. What are these herbs and what are they supposed to do? Psalms 104 and verse 14. What book are we looking for? Psalms 104 and verse 14. Psalms 104 and verse 14. Let's see what it says there. Psalms 104 and verse 14. How much time do I have tonight? Have I gone over an hour yet? Give me a sign. 5, 10, 15, 20. I've gone over? Five minutes? Okay, let's close it up. We have so much time, brother and sister. I want to close this up quickly with a few texts. And tonight is our last meeting until Saturday night. Saturday night when we come together, we're having a very special night. I want to take the foundation we've laid here and give you some very, very practical, th I'm going to show you the 10 most effective healing strategies I've used all over the country and all over the world to deal with, personally deal with individuals with prostate cancer, breast cancer, lupus, diabetes, and heart disease. I'm going to give you my 10 most healing strategies. Now, some people, I'm sure some of my colleagues are trying to sneak inside here and to get a video camera, but I'm going to give you my secrets, which are not secrets. I told you those secrets are right here. But I'm going to give you the secrets that I've used to help people all over the world with this foundation, but I'm going to build upon it and show you the various diseases and how I deal with them. Coupled with that, on Saturday night we're having a screening. We're going to have blood pressure and glucose, we're going to have your weight and even some of the body fat indications to give you an idea of your general health. We looked at that, that survey the other day, and a lot of you have seen because of the survey what your danger level is, but we're going to go a little bit farther and give you a free screening with your blood pressure, glucose, weight, and so on, so that when we come together and we talk about God's word, you'll be better equipped to know where you are and how aggressively you need to approach some of these principles. 
Now, I do have the, the handouts you gave me, and some people are asking for programs, and I'm working on those, but we want you to not just come tonight and don't come back, come back. We want you to come back again Saturday night to get the free health screening and get some understanding of where you are in your health and also to find out the 10 most healing strategies I've used all over to help people with prostate cancer, breast cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Some people have that right now in the room. Do you want to get well? Be here Saturday night. We're going to go a little bit farther. Let's look at Psalms 104 as we close and get a few texts in before we close. Psalms 104 and verse 14. We're talking about this healing herb that God has made. Psalm 104 and verse 14. If you're there, say amen. Psalm 104 and verse 14, it says, He causes, meaning God, He causes the grass to grow for who? For cattle and herb for the service of man that He might bring what? For food out of the ground. Very important principle. That word service in the Hebrew, if you go home and look at your Strong's or if you have it on the computer, look at the word service in Psalm 104. That word service means ministry. Ministry means to serve. In other words, the herb of the field as well as the grass, the grass he calls for the cattle, and the herb to minister or do a service to man. What is it serving and giving to man? It is ministering these elements in large doses for the healing of man. How do, you, how, do you, how do you find that to be true? When you look at the Word of God, there's, well, look at the book of Deuteronomy. Let's do two more texts and we'll close. Deuteronomy speaks of the power of the sun. We see the sun up here. Deuteronomy 33 talks about what the sun does to, to promote healing in the world. We know that we need sunlight to get vitamin D. Some of you may know that. But look at the book of Deuteronomy. Let's look at the text here. What, is the, what are these green herbs? What are these herbs of the field? And we turn to Deuteronomy 33. What are these green herbs ministering to man? We talked about the elements. We know it's the elements. We know they get elements and the various iron and calcium and, and magnesium preparations in large amounts, medicinal amounts, that cause healing. Golden seal, uh, aloe vera, uh, cat's claw, uh, peppermint, all these various different things that grow wild. And many of you believe they're herbs. You spend hundreds of dollars trying to get them out of your yard. If you use them, they probably would heal you of some of your diseases. Amen. We're looking for Deuteronomy 33. Look what it says here. It's amazing as I travel, and even I go and visit some people in their homes, and I've, vi I've actually visited homes. We turn to Deuteronomy 33. I've visited homes, and as I walked into the home and walked through the, the walkway and came up, I could actually look out and see plants in their yard, that if they knew how to use them, they would not even need me to come to their house. I've walked to people's houses, and people have been suffering from fibromyalgia and various different uh, lupus and so on, and the house has aloe vera growing everywhere. All uh, sheep sorrow, red clover, all these different healing, strengthening herbs are right there, but they have no idea how to use them. God has caused these things to grow for the service, the ministry of man, but man walks over it or throws it away or digs it out and puts it in the trash can and pays a doctor millions of dollars to get better when God has given the healing right there. God, they're praying now and now, God, please bless me. Show me something or give me something that I can get healed from this disease. And God has given it to them.